Right, so we already have the slot working, so the boot mesh is already functional, but now we actually need to see how it works with the proper overlay generated. So I'm going to actually generate right now the, the overlay. I'm going to drag here the textures uh, to the correct folder. We need here the raw files. And the same way we have the FBX file, now we are going to have the three textures. So we have the Diffuse. It's basically responsible for the color uh, of the, the asset. Usually if this is not the base texture that will be applied to the entire mesh, we should also have uh, an alpha channel with uh, information. This will, I will be able to mention more later. We have the normal map. It's basically the same uh, normal map file that we usually use on any project. And we have a file with the specular and gloss information. So specular uh, is kept on the three first channels and gloss is kept on the alpha channel of this third texture. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of those three and I'm going to use true color instead of compressive. As we are going to generate the final uh, processed overlays based on those files, I'm not going to, I don't want to generate the processed file considering already a uh, texture that has been compressed. I would be possibly uh, compressing two times uh, and losing uh, quite some quality if I, I have the raw files uh, being also compressed. And uh, the rest, I would like to first open here the material builder. What I'm going to do now is to adjust here the names. Uh, this is not necessary, but this is going to make it easy for the for the automatic solution to figure out what are those files. So we have the diffuse, normal, and specular. I'm going to drag all of those here, and uh, automatically it already identifies the files. And we can see here the GFUs, normal map, and specular. One really important thing is that the normal map shouldn't be set as normal map tag here. Because this, uh, this process should be done uh, on the material builder itself. So you, you shouldn't uh, set up this as uh, normal map. If I do this and actually drag normal map here, you will actually see this. Normal map textures should not be set as normal map type. So this is a warning. I'll get back here and drag again. Okay. So always make sure that it's set as true color. And uh, usually we use the maximum size uh, for 2K or 4K, depending on the texture size itself. I'll keep this one as 1K, uh, because I don't want uh, more uh, texture space than this for the boots itself. In fact, I'm going to reduce this even more, but just for this test, uh, I will keep this, uh, keep it this way. So we have all of them. In this case, we are going to change the element name here as well for boot01 uh, overlay. And we need to change the texture folder for the overlays here that I created. And now we just have set those information here. We don't need to worry about this. And of course, we click here on create overlay. Okay, when it's done, what we have here is the success message. 
And if, if we take a look here on the overlays, instead of three textures, we have two of them. As you've already uh, read at the manual and other hear, heard of in other video tutorials, we actually uh, pack, uh, let me apply here the changes. We actually pack uh, three textures on only two. So basically the GFuse texture is quite the same, but here on the normal uh, map, we actually uh, keep both the normal map data on two channels and the gloss and specular on the other two channels. So we are actually able to pack uh, three textures in two and reduce considerably reduce the memory usage on those textures. So everything is already uh, set here. Uh, we have this as um, ARGB. Uh, 32 bits. Uh, I'm actually going to reduce this for uh, 512 and I'm going to compress both of those. And also, if you're using uh, the indie license of Unity, it's important to have uh, both textures set here at Advanced and with the Read, Write, Enable. This is really important because if you were using the indie license, you actually need to have uh, direct access to the texture with the Read, Write, Enable. And let's take a look here on the overlay uh, asset. So we have here uh, boot01 overlay. Let me call this mail boot01 overlay. This is interesting. You can actually use the same overlay both for the male and the female boots. And uh, I will probably change this later, but I will keep this way for now. And on texture list, we have both uh, both textures set. I won't be talking about those two guys here uh, today, probably on later tutorials. And I will keep focusing on actually having this working at the end of this video. So now we have the overlay set, and we actually want to use this instead of the crazy skin of the after to the boot uh, mesh itself. So I'm back here to the scene. The same way we done with the slot library, we are going to drag the overlay to the overlay library and order and update list. Uh, I won't get worried about this right now. I'll probably at some point record a new video tutorial specifically to explain this again, but I won't uh, bother about this right now. Just uh, if you if you're not aware how it works, uh, at least for now keep the default values, the default setting here. And okay, now we have the boot zero one overlay. Uh, again, the final name is this one. And we just need to actually use this overlay instead of the body uh, overlay. So again, we're getting here on the the random set. And if I remember correctly, is element number six. And if we are using the mail boots, I'm actually not going to use a shared overlay list. This is not going to be used. And I'm actually going to use one overlay and this guy will be called uh, mail boot zero one. Let me just be sure if it's the same name. Oh no, we have the overlay here. Let me remove this mail boot zero one. Let me keep this way for now. So okay. Uh, just uh, pay attention on this because we have the same name for the slot and the overlay. 
So we you need to understand those are two different things. And uh, we have uh, maximum and minimum RGB. And I won't change this for now. I'll leave it this way. Uh, just to show what happens. And I'll press OK here. Let me reduce this one. And save and actually press play here. Perfect. So if we take a look here, we now have all of those guys here with the shoes, the, the boots, but they are all black. Uh, so it's really hard to see if everything is working. Uh, so that's when we actually have to set up the color here. Um, here, okay. So we have the maximum and minimum RGB. So we might want to have a full variation. So right, as you can see here, we have all the full uh, color range variation. We have some really weird colors here. And this is interesting because uh, they are all, all of them are quite dark. And this is because the original texture is also dark as like this. So in case you actually want to use the original color, you can use the white on both of those and you preserve the, the original color and you, you won't be changing the, the tint of, of the entire, uh, the entire match, mesh. So this is usually what you want if you have a specifically, uh, specific color set for the mesh and it looks really, really better in this case. As you can see, really nice. But it also is more visible that the jeans and the, the boots is not perfectly matching uh, the junction between them. So this is something I, I will be uh, talking about on the next uh, video tutorial. Uh, so that's it. I hope those tutorials have been uh, useful for you guys and there will be much more to come on the following days. That's it. See you guys. Goodbye.